what's going on guys? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you lot are all doing well today and welcome back to Chelsea News, the series where I consolidate all the interesting gear from around Chelsea football news media, put it in one small and lovely package. I don't really know why I'm saying this like this and deliver it to you guys, the viewer. And there's some interesting stuff to talk about today. I want to talk about the resumption of training in the Premier League, including Chelsea Football Club. A sad, sad story, for me anyway, regarding Dries Mertens. And also, superstar of the weekend, Kai Havertz, the young German superstar. Could he actually be exactly what Chelsea are looking for? Mmm. Lots of interesting and hopefully informative stuff here for you guys to crack into. And if you like daily football, Chelsea football news content, why not subscribe to this channel, Football Therapy? Please consider doing so, hitting that bell notification icon as that is important. Why not like this video, help a brother out? All right, let's get into the content. All right, players are due to return to training in small groups, groups of five, I believe. So it was actually a unanimous decision between all Premier League clubs, not necessarily to start football again just yet, but to get players back in safe, socially distanced training. There was a meeting between all Premier League managers and apparently there was four very vocal coaches, two of which were named Frank Lampard and Jurgen Klopp, though are really interested in looking after the safety of their players. Kind of suits both their personas and of course Frank Lampard was recently a player himself. I heard this from the Athletic podcast straight out of Cobham which is a Chelsea related podcast and I highly recommend. Players are also due back for testing I believe today. Callum Hudson-Odoi won't be tested apparently because he's still dealing with his delicate situation and while they try and get things cleared up regarding that he will probably take a step back and the other players will come in. It's also been reported that Chelsea might already know players who have tested positive, implying that they've already been tested. Not really important. What is important is they're looking after the players, they're keeping them all safe, and they're sort of slowly integrating them back into training in an appropriate way. I've said on previous videos this will be important, although you might think the resumption of football is too premature if it indeed is soon, training is important if it's kept safe. It's good for the mental well-being of players, it's good for the physical fitness of players, and generally opening up conversations between players, between each other, between the club, coaches, talking about contracts. Frank Lampard and Chelsea can gain a better scope of where they are with their players and it could make them a little bit closer to extending deals or maybe figuring out who to buy. So now we've talked about the uh, training, let's talk about buying and transfers. It does look like the likes of Willian and Pedro will sign extensions to see Chelsea out for the rest of the season. But that was, I don't want to say that was a given, that's, that's good of them to do so, but the qu big question is, what are Chelsea going to do moving forwards? Who are they going to bring in? Because... Uh, a big favourite of mine, if you watch the channel, you know I'm a huge Dries Mertens fan. It does look like he's agreed a three-year deal to stay at his beloved Napoli. Hello darkness, my old friend. So yeah, there's that. Now look, I get it, it's not the biggest loss in the world. Dude is 33, there's no guarantee he'll drop into the Premier League and do bits. I just think he's an excellent, hilarious character, excellent footballer, could offer uh, a sort of role model figure to both wingers and strikers and just offer seniority in the front line. But fair enough, I get it. I actually was saying in the last couple of videos, I understand why he'd probably go to Inter Milan over Chelsea in terms of staying in Italy, playing for a winner like Conte, playing with Lukaku, probably getting a longer deal because of Syria. You know, all that kind of stuff. But apparently he's agreed a three-year deal, which is a lot for a 33-year-old. To stay on as beloved Naples, you can break the scoring record and generally, I suppose, have a happy ending. Maybe he was just using Chelsea as a sort of opportunity to get a better deal out of Napoli, I don't know. Or maybe he was legitimately considering it because he was speaking to Frank Lampard a lot and I think, I think maybe he probably liked the idea of joining Chelsea provided it met his financial requirements. But no, it's not meant to be, so you know, I'm just gonna have to take the L, eat it up, move on and sort of 
look forward and speculate what Chelsea could do now because man oh man Chelsea need reinforcements they're sold players they've got money you know there'll be Tamui Bakayoko money hopefully on top of Alvaro Morata money the Hazard money still lurking around and Chelsea would have a general generated revenue they should be safe and sound in financial fair play with the ability to do some serious moves in the transfer market this summer we know there were noises around the club that they have serious intentions in doing so Grant before the pandemic struck but still but still they will have the intention to make some serious changes in this Chelsea squad and add much needed quality to bridge the gap as Frank Lampard is often found saying in interviews so I did want to talk about a player in today's video that you know what upon the sobering reflection he could be the ideal purchase for Chelsea Football Club and that is man of the moment in terms of this weekend Kai Havertz. You know what? That's probably a little bit unfair. Man of the moment this last season or two, he's been excellent. Now, I've spoken about Kai Havertz before on the channel, and I spoke about him coming in and, you know, perhaps challenging Mason Mount for the number 10, as often he's seen as that sort of number 10 second striker, creative midfielder that's an attacking midfielder that plays in the hole. But the truth is, Kai Havertz has often played as a forward, as a striker. This weekend, he caught the headlines in the resumption of the Bundesliga. He scored a brace in, I believe, the first half against Werder Bremen. One was a lovely header as well. It's nice to see these attacking mids get his head in there. I kind of thought of him as more of a like, nimble number 10, but when I saw him rise up and score that header, I was like, yes! Centre forward vibes. And the truth is, he has played centre forward. Like I said a few times, check out this screenshot of a couple of performances he's had playing in the number nine position. So suddenly, you know, I was thinking Chelsea could buy a striker, you know, Osimhen, someone like that, then he'd be great. You know, challenge and rotate with Tammy. But the thing that I really liked about Dries Mertens was his versatility. The fact how you could move him around on the flanks or up front. You could do that with Kai Havertz. He's the ultimate versatile player. Plays in the number 10, plays in right wing, left wing, and he can play as a striker well. In fact, the young German is on flame. Superb form. He has 16 goal contributions in his last 13 games in all competitions. 16 in 13. That is incredible. The dude is 20 years old. 20! So, he scores goals, he scores assists, he can be a versatile player positionally. It's good because that might be better for the likes of Tammy Abraham. If he was solely a number nine, like someone like Victor Osimhen, he might put the pressure on and, you know, challenge the mentality of Tammy Abraham. You could say it's good or bad, whatever. But a player like Kai Havertz, he could be like, right, well, we can be on the pitch together at the same time. This isn't necessarily going to, you know, force me off the number nine throne at Chelsea. Do you see what I mean? So thinking about it that way, he could be an ideal player for Chelsea to look at. Now, he's been loosely linked in recent history. Um... But I think Chelsea are absolutely looking at him, and of course he plays for Bayer Leverkusen, a good team out in Germany, but a move to Chelsea would certainly be a step up. Granted, Liverpool might be looking at him, and for me, he might be a more appropriate replacement alternative to Firmino than someone like Timo Werner would be, who just seems like an absolutely different kind of player. So, should Kai Havertz consider Chelsea? I think so, but Michael Ballack, Chelsea legend, hasn't been doing us much favours. Ballack has been speaking on the young player saying, you know what, dude, he should stay at Bayer Leverkusen. They are a really good club in terms of playing attacking football, they look after the young players, there's no pressure on the players like there would be in other atmospheres at different clubs, and that could suit Kai much, much more. So, you know, he's saying stay at Leverkusen, but Chelsea fans, we're all saying come to Stamford Bridge. Now, me talking about Kai Havertz and Chelsea is not implying that, you know, there's headlines this morning saying Kai Havertz going to London. Do you know what I mean? We have been linked before loosely, but so have other clubs like the likes of Liverpool. I'm just saying, if the player looked at Liverpool and Chelsea and said, look, I say Bobby Firmino is going to be staying there for a while. Maybe I could slot straight into Chelsea, play the number nine when Tammy's not there, or take his number nine off him. Or who knows, plays on either flank, you know? Maybe he rotates around with Ziyech behind Tammy. It could happen. It's all a good option, in my opinion. Basically, 
his, his recency bias again, he's fresh in the mind, he had an excellent weekend, and people are looking at his numbers and they're going, oh yeah, Kai Havertz, he's excellent. Anyway, what do you guys think of today's stories in this news video? Let me know, what do you think about the return to training? What do you think about Dries Mertens staying at Napoli? And what do you think about Kai Havertz being that potential player to come in and help Chelsea. If you can think of someone else, get down in the comment section below and talk about those players as well. I'll be down there, I'll be interested to hear your thoughts and opinions on potential suitors to bolster the Chelsea front line. And if you've, <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video today, I can speak English, I'd urge you to like the video, that helps me out a lot. Subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so, please consider subscribing to my sister channel, Jan's Yard, where I do additional content for you guys. And also, you're welcome to follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it for me, you lot. Enjoy the football that's soon to happen in England, happening in Germany, whatever. I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I let me be.